Hey guys, thank you for joining us on another Fuel Pack Friday. We're just going to wait for uh, Instagram to catch up here. And uh, we're good. So again, guys, thanks for joining us on uh, Fuel Pack Friday. Um, I'm Brian from Vance and Hines, and today we're going to talk about anything you guys want to talk about. So if you guys have any questions regarding the FP3 or Vance and Hines products in general, just go ahead and throw them out there, and we'll get the ball rolling. Hi, Beam Tommy. Good morning, buddy. How you doing? Um, for the time being, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about the new features in the FP3 that we unveiled this morning through video. So brand new this morning, we have a new feature in the FP3 for both the Android and the iOS that allows you to enable and disable cruise control. It also allows you to, let me go ahead and reframe this so my head's not getting cut off. It also allows you to go ahead and reset your system switches through our API to your stock configuration, which basically means that, good morning, Ryan, uh, if you happen to have your bike flash with an FP3, and um, the cruise control or radio or speedometer or whatever stops working. Uh, essentially, that means that you likely are an iOS user who had one of our like really, really strange bugs. Um, it doesn't happen very often. It's probably like one in 10,000, one in 20,000 users. But we wanted to give those guys the ability to go ahead and reset their system switches over the weekend if they're doing it by themselves. So that way, they're not kind of stuck waiting on our customer support team. So. Normally, what would happen is our customer support team is available uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 Pacific Standard Time, and they can go ahead and get those system switches restored for you, which basically means that you can upload the file to us, we'll make the modifications, send it back to you, and then all that stuff will work for normal. Now, if this happens to you on a Saturday, if you're working on your bike on the weekend, you want to go out and ride it, not having cruise control is a bummer. So we wanted to give you guys the same tools to go ahead and do that on your own. So we'll go ahead and take one of the questions here from Facebook. Uh, Claude Bissette says, is the auto-tune necessary? For the most part, Claude, the answer is no. Um, auto-tune I kind of put into like three particular categories. So it's the people who were running like really wild out there, custom exhausts, um, something for which the FP3 doesn't have like a standard bass tune. Something like that would be like an LAF pipe or um, like a chopper style two to two, like upswept fishtail kind of thing. So anything that's sort of out of the ordinary fits into that category. Um, the other two are if you live out of the country. So if you live outside of the US, sometimes the fuel is gonna be a little bit different where you live compared to where we do with mapping here. And as a result, the additives are different, the blend is different, and it's gonna require different fueling across the volumetric efficiency tables for everything to work properly, which basically means you'll have to run an auto-tune in order to have your VE tables dialed and not get O2 sensor trouble codes front and rear. Um, the other option is people living at high elevation. If you happen to live, say, Denver, Flagstaff, anywhere above, say, 5,000 feet elevation, it's a good idea to run auto-tune just so your automatic fuel trims aren't having to work so hard uh, to keep your bike running optimally at that elevation. You want to have your bike tuned for its everyday normal use, not necessarily the exception. So like down here, we live around sea level. Um, if I go to the mountains, the automatic fuel trims will basically uh, lean out the mixture as I need it for those specific conditions. But because I'm not riding in those conditions all the time, it's kind of nice to have that as like a once in a while thing rather than um, the the base general rule of thumb. So crazy exhausts, uh, anything that's truly, truly custom that's not in the FB3 app. Um, anybody living out of the country who's experiencing front and rear O2 sensor codes, and then of course, uh, elevation. Let's see, Mark from Facebook asks, uh, if I flash a B&H map to my bike and then need to take it back to the dealer for warranty work, will the dealer be able to tell if I reflash back to the original OEM and avoid my warranty? Questions for educational purposes, wink, wink, <laughs> thank you. Um, so what ends up happening is we do a carbon copy of the FP3 map uh, or of the map that comes from the bike for the zero slot. So nothing is changed. Everything is the same as far as like the checksum and everything is concerned. So if you take it back to the dealer with the OEM map flashed into the bike, uh, you should be good to go. We'll go ahead and cruise over to Instagram here make sure I'm not missing anybody. Uh, someone got pulled over for loud pipes in Florida. <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. Say gear, gear, ask sustain. Let me just roll. What are my pronouns? Uh, he, him, his. <laughs> Morning from Connecticut, FP3. All right, we're kind of catching up a little bit here on Instagram, so we'll bounce back over to Facebook. Uh, Larry Coleman asks, uh, announced recently several states are adopting carb rules. How will this affect the FP3 use? So 
A couple of different things. Um, one, depending on when the states enact the Air Resources Board rules is going to have a bit of a bearing on what the FP3 can and cannot do and whether or not you can still get it in your state. Um, for the most part, the FP3 is 49 state legal, which basically means that you can go ahead and get it in every state but California, the standard FP3. So that would be the 66005 and the 66007 part numbers. Now, you don't have to worry about California compliancy right now unless you live in California. And for that, we do offer the FP3 CARB model. So there is a CARB approved fuel pack FP3 that is just for you know, CARB approved exhausts with CARB approved tunes here in California. So the FP3 is going to be a bit limited by comparison. Now, because it's only approved exhausts with approved tunes in California, when those other states do adopt the CARB rules, it is likely that you will not be able to get the standard uh, FP3 in those states anymore. And if that is the case, then what will likely happen is you will have to get the CARB FP3, which again is limited in its capacity just based on what is a legal map and the legal exhaust. So something like our CTR header that we offer, we actually used a, a fuel pack compliant and FPC. Uh, and that was again, based on ratings from our air resources board that allowed us to only tune one bike with one map and then only have the ability to go back to stock. So there was no custom tweaks, no throttle progressivity, no bump drive limit, et cetera. We had to do all that stuff in the base tune and get it passed from CARB in order to make that stuff compliant. And so the FP3 is kind of be limited in what you can do. You can run auto-tune, just understand that in closed loop, it's going to pretty much lock you to where you need to be. Um, spark timing tables, you can't adjust as much. Uh, biometric efficiency fueling tables, you can't adjust as much. So there's a lot that's kind of being held back from that CARB model. So again, if the other states do adopt, like fully adopt the CARB model and have their own air resources board and start saying, well, it has to be CARB approved, everything moving forward motorcycle exhausts, um, air cleaners, tuners, then, you know, that's the rules we'll have to play by. And for that, we do have a CARB FP3. Just understand that it's not going to be what you're used to out of a standard FP3. Thanks, Larry. All right, let me roll back over here to Instagram, make sure we're cool. <laughs> Someone wants a shout out. Good morning, Rhythm. And a repost. That's not my gag. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, Eddie Johnson one asks, what's the loudest exhaust Vance and Heinz can offer? That kind of depends. Um, there's a couple different options. One, if you're talking about, um, touring exhausts, we have the Torque 450s. So, what? this would be the Torque 450, which is going to be the best as far as like looking for loud and sound on a Milwaukee 8 touring bike. So, this one runs with our patented LS275, patent pending LS275 baffle. So it's a monster, monster, monster baffle. That is what gives this all the sound you're looking for. Uh, this muffler we offer in a couple different finishes. We offer it in full chrome, we offer it in black. And uh, as of very recently, we now offer it in a black machine cut. I don't have a machine cut here, but basically if this were black, all of the hide ridges go through an additional pass in the factory to give it sort of that like contrast cut machine look to it. So touring model, Torque 450s. Um, and I would pair that with a power jewels header. Now, if we're talking about something else, um, I would usually look for like a short two to one. Uh, stainless up sweep two to one is pretty loud. Uh, the high output shorts, two to, high output two to one short on twin cam, Dynas off tails is very loud. Um, short shot staggered, big radius are always going to be pretty, pretty good bread and butter if you're looking for like loud, uh, kind of classic aggressive tone systems. And uh, yeah, that would go. So touring uh, Torker 450s, regardless of model year, we do offer them for the um, 95 to 16 as well as the Milwaukee 8s. Uh, power duels to pair with that. And then I would look at any of our uh, more free flowing header systems. So HO2 to one short, uh, stainless two to one upsweep, pro pipe with the competition baffles pretty loud, uh, short shot staggered, and big radius two in the two. Um, Tony here on Facebook is asking, can you auto tune with the SNS 475 cams? Uh, you can auto tune. And on top of that, we actually do offer some base calibration tunes for those SNS 475C camshafts. Um, I did have the opportunity to borrow a customer's bike who happened to install those camshafts, and I was able to dyno that map right here at Vance and Heinz. So we do have a pretty good base cal specifically for the SNS 475C CAM. So contact our customer support team. Again, they're available Monday through Friday, eight to five Pacific Standard Time. 
Uh, you can call them on the phone. You can do online chat with them. Uh, or you can just shoot them an email 24 hours a day. Just know that they will only answer those emails again that Monday through Friday time. Uh, so we offer 475C based calibrations. We offer them for um, the RS 468s. We've got a couple 124 inch, 128 inch, T143 inch maps, a couple 120Rs, um, stage two through four for, you know, 114, 117, et cetera. So if you guys need any maps for like big bore kit type stuff, go ahead, hit us up and we can go ahead and uh, get that to you. Now we also do offer the Fuel Pack Pro. So if you wanted to run a wideband auto tune, you can go ahead and pair the FP3 with your Fuel Pack Pro, take it around the block like you would normally as far as like tuning it out on the road. It'll be a lot more accurate. You'll get more data a lot more quickly and it's gonna build you what is essentially a, an almost dyno tuned map out on the road due to those wideband sensors. So if you're doing something bigger, stage two through four, uh, and you want to get it really dialed in, go ahead and get the Fuel Pack Pro to pair with your FP3, and uh, that'll get you good. Uh, I did about two thirds of my time in the dyno during development and a third on the road, so uh, it'll make a hell of a map on the road. Copy break, pardon. Uh, Claude Bissett says, I'll need to auto-tune then. Do you have a video how to? Um, I do, actually. I should probably do a new one because I haven't done an auto-tune video in this series. Uh, long and short is if you go to the most recent one I did, it would probably be the auto-tune preview screen. He talks about putting the bike into auto-tune, uh, how to write it, and then how to use that preview screen to determine when you're done mapping. So look at that one. Uh, that is a really good suggestion. I'll go ahead and do uh, an updated video for that just to have something. Uh, but the gist of it is you'll want to go ahead and put it in auto-tune. Uh, go ahead and quick start. You don't need to do an advanced start for it, Claude. And then from there, you would basically take it out on the road, write it 20 to 30 minutes, take a look at the preview button to look at the volumetric efficiency delta tables. Now, the delta tables are going to be the delta or the difference between where the map started and where the map has ended. So you can actually see the degrees of change. Uh, if it's red, like these, um, <laughs> like these cabinets, uh, it means you needed to add a whole bunch of fuel to that portion of the table. If it's like a darker blue, it needs that you had to pull out a lot of fuel. And then anything in sort of that green zone is something where you were neither adding nor removing a bunch of fuel, which means you're pretty much dialed in for that particular cell. So what I'd recommend is going through, hit preview, take a look at the gradations in that chart. If it's mostly green, you're pretty much good to go. If there's a bit of red, a bit of blue, go ahead, apply, learn values, hit apply do the next pass. You want to do that about two to three times and eventually towards the end, it should be mostly green. Now you will still see some outliers, some blue, some red cells. Um, go ahead and apply learning values, hit finished. At that point, what I would do is I would take like a mental note as to where those cells are. I would go back into the view edit maps portion of the app. Uh, we take a look at that. I'd look at the volumetric efficiency front and rear to see where particularly those spots are and see if the values are drastically different between you know that cell and the cells adjacent. And then what I would do is I would polish it up manually to make that a bit smoother for my liking. Um, on top of it, before you do any auto tune procedures, make sure everything is mechanically good. Uh, clutch adjustment, primary chain adjustment, drive belt adjustment, uh, tire pressure, decent spark plugs, clean air filter. Uh, it doesn't have to be fresh oil, but make sure the oil's not trashed. Um, basically, long and short is if you weren't comfortable putting it in a dyno, you really shouldn't be auto-tuning it on the road. Uh, any intake or exhaust leaks can change and tweak the volumetric efficiency tables. Any lack of optimization as far as the drive train is considered can change the volumetric efficiency tables. So that's all stuff you will want to go ahead and verify prior to running that auto-tune. But you're right, I haven't done an auto-tune video in a while. I should do a new one. Uh, I'm going to bounce over to Instagram. Sorry for the wait, guys. Everyone's been patient. So, uh, favorites of the shorties. Love them with my sporty. Cool, cool, cool. All righty. Competition is nice and loud. Yeah, it is. Uh, how much horsepower would I gain if I change my short shots? Two to one. Oh, two to two and one on Iron 83. Not a whole lot. If everything remains equal, you're probably talking about like maybe a percentage point or two. Uh, not a huge, huge difference depending on what two and one you went with. Now, if you went with a longer header two to one with more volume, you'll probably do better. If you went with something like a blackout two and one, it's going to outperform like a stainless or a comp two and one, uh, particularly when it comes to like low end torque. Now, if you're more concerned with top end or you want that look, then go with the stainless two to one upsweep. Just know that, you know, compared to short shots, your bottom end will pick up a little bit, not a whole heck of a lot. Um, but the top end, I think, is where you're really going to see the drastic changes in that. 
FP3 suitable for M8 warranty wise. We covered that a little bit. Flash it back to stock, pull it off your bike, take it to the dealer, should be good to go. Uh, do I need to remap if I put on a drip can? So if you put on a drip can or like an external breather setup, then it's a good question. Because typically you would have the oil passing back through the induction module and that would get burnt out through your combustion chamber and out your exhaust. Um, my inclination is that that's likely not going to change it. Uh, back in the day when those were very common, where people were using catch cans a lot on like twin cam and Evo carbureted models, it wouldn't really change the jetting. So I would vary to say that it's probably not likely that you'll need to run an auto tune or remap it if you put on a drip can. If anything, it'll change it a couple of percentage points. And that's well within the values that can be changed from the um, automatic fuel trims in the ECU. So if that is the case, I personally, if it were my bike and I put it on an external drip, I wouldn't remap it because I know my trims will take care of it. Um, but you can if you want, shouldn't be necessary. Uh, Mick9595 asks, do I need to use a dyno with an FP3? Uh, no, you don't. The FP3 was designed to be as user-friendly as humanly possible. So you can go ahead and map it with one of our uh, dyno tuned maps that we created in our dynos. Put it in your bike, take it out and ride it. Uh, you can auto-tune it there using the narrowband sensors on the road if necessary, so you don't need to take it into a dyno and get a really good tune out of it. Now, if you start doing, like, again, stage two through four or five kind of stuff, big board kits, race motors, that kind of thing, then I would recommend the Fuel Pack Pro simply for the wideband functionality, and it's going to get you a much closer, more polished uh, and accurate tune um, in less time. Hi, Beam Tommy says, do you guys support turbo kits? As in, if I were to install a turbo kit, would you guys be able to assist me with the tune? Um, there have been a couple users who have done turbos. They've all been Fuel Pack Pro tuned bikes. Um, I know I did one many years ago on uh, Street 500. Turbo Trey brought one in for Born Free a number of years back. Um, and I have had a couple of users, uh, Fuel Pack Pro dealers out in the wild make turbocharged maps with Fuel Pack Pro. Um, I think if you have a standard FP3, that's going to be tough. I would recommend using a Fuel Pack Pro just, again, for the wideband functionality. I would definitely probably, if it were me, I would do it in a dyno. I'm not sure I'd be super comfortable doing that on the road, just depending on what the boost is coming out of that thing. Because um, the amount of bar pressure you're pushing through is going to change things drastically. Um, and you're going to want to tune that ideally a little bit per map. Um, for me personally, if I were to do a tuned bike as far as turbo, um, I would use the FP3 with a Fuel Pack Pro in a dyno. I would do my normal wideband auto-tune. And then from there, I would also do additional verification passes and tweak manually um, for it to be where I want it to be. So there would definitely be some extra work involved with that. But yeah, it can be done. All right, I'm going to bounce back to Facebook since I got one over here. Uh, Rick Wheeler asked, do I recommend another auto-tune upgrading stock header to Power Duels? No, I wouldn't. Um, just go ahead and flash the the FP3 with the Power Duels map that we've done here. Um, it's done in the dyno uh, at our facility. You're going to be within, I don't know, 2 to 3% of optimal. Um, one of the things I noticed when we did the Fuel Pack Pro Tour around the country when the tool was built is we would basically send people, you know, here's a set of Power Duels and Eliminator, 3 or Eliminator 400s. Um, here's a set of wide bands. We'll go ahead and get everything installed. That way we fly in, we do the, the tuning seminar and then we leave and we go to the next dealer and just do like three or four of those a day. Um, typically when we ran auto tune using our products in a dyno with fuel pack pro, the tr values only changed in the volumetric efficiency Delta tables and the preview button that we built specifically for the pro and moved to the standard FP3 as well, really only changed about two to 3%. So you shouldn't need to auto-tune it after that upgrade. I would just go ahead and instead of, say, Torker 450s with OEM or stock header with Torker 450s, just change it to Torker 450s with power duels or whatever muffler you're running, and uh, you should be good to go. All right. Uh, Design Junks on Instagram says, Hey, Brian, love the lines of the short shots. Is there a future two-to-one exhaust design for Sportsters? Um, not at the moment, no. I'm trying to see if I have one in here. I don't. Um, so right now we just offered the two to one, uh, the stainless two to one upsuit for the Sportsters, and it's just come out in black. Um, so we we basically took the two to one, the stainless two to one upsuit that's been a pretty good mover for for Sportsters, for Dynas, for M8 Softails, and it's now available in a high temp black uh, ceramic coating. So that would be the newest. Uh, and I just see notice you said no upsweep just straight. Uh, at this moment, no, we're not going to have anything new likely for Sportsters. Um, 
Sportsers for 2021 actually kept their old six pin uh, Deutsch connector plug, as opposed to the newer touring and soft tail models with the updated plug. Um, new ECUs on those as well. Sportster retained all of the old stuff. The fact that Sportster retained the old plug and the old ECU and the old tuning strategy makes me wonder how long the Sportsters are going to continue to be around. Hopefully they will. I like Sportsters. I've owned a couple. Been around since 57. One of the longest running Harley lines. And so for them to get rid of it, it's going to be a bummer, but we'll see. Uh, speaking of which, <laughs> it says, Phil, any time frame on fuel pack for 2021 Harleys? Uh, no, we had a nice breakthrough earlier this week. Uh, stuff I can't talk about, but know that, you know, every week that passes, we're getting closer and closer and closer. And we took a nice, nice big leap this week. Uh, Benny on IG asks, is it worth changing the stock baffle to the comp on a bagger pro pipe? It depends what you're trying to accomplish there, Benny. Um, the standard baffle is really nice because you get a good bunch of like low end kind of grunt, a lot of, a lot of torque from that. Um, but you're not sacrificing a lot of top end. As soon as you put the competition baffle in it, you're actually going to sacrifice that bottom end a bit for high end power. Um, mostly people put the competition baffle in for sound, less about top end horsepower. And so... The other option would be the quiet baffle. Most people don't think performance when they think quiet baffles, but the quiet baffle on a pro pipe in particular makes a ton of low end power um, to the tune of like, I've seen it as high as 10 to 12 foot pounds increase the bottom end. Um, so a quiet baffle on a pro pipe is really a killer setup. Um, something to think about. So if you want noise, then yeah, go ahead and go to the comp. Just understand you're going to sacrifice a bit of bottom end doing so. Uh, standard is kind of the best of both worlds. And if you want more low end grunt, go ahead and change it to a quiet baffle. Maybe not the answer you're looking for, um, but it's cool data. I mean, 10 to 12 foot pounds is a hell of a lot. Ooh, Flamestock Garage on IG asks uh, one question Are you going to launch new slip ons for the Honda Rebel 1100? Thanks from Spain. We already have, it's already been announced. We actually were one of the few vendors who is at the American Honda press launch um, just a couple of weeks ago. So yes, there is going to be a stainless two to one upsweep slip on for the Honda Rebel 1100. Uh, Denkoop69 on YouTube says, do you happen to know when I'll be able to purchase the pipes for the BMW R18? Uh, at this particular moment, I do not know. Um, I've ridden the bike with the pipes on. They look really, really cool and they sound awesome. Uh, but as far as like the official time frame, I, I don't have that information. I apologize. Uh, let's see here. Back to IG. Uh, ordered two hours ago the two to one stainless upsweep. Can't wait. Thanks, DJP83. Very cool. You got those. Appreciate your support. Uh, <laughs> Randall, FP3 working on 2021 Street Glide. Not yet, buddy. We're working on it. Trust me, we are definitely crushing that thing as much as we possibly can. Uh, electronics team is working on all sorts of updates. Um, I've been back and forth with bikes. My, my head engineer has been back and forth with bikes. So we are moving as fast as we humanly can. Hi, I'm in the UK. I've got a 2020 Sport Glide with short shots and breather. Should I do an auto-tune instead of doing the base map? I haven't heard of anybody in the UK running one of our maps that has had to run an auto-tune. Um, typically, the fuel is close enough where you're not going to have any O2 front or rear sensor code, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. You can run an autotune if you want to verify, um, but for the most part, I, I haven't heard of anybody in the UK having issues with any maps. Design Junks uh, likes TBR Shorty, want Vance and Hines. Yeah, I don't have any any turnouts or, or anything new coming from the sportsers that that I know of. Mr. Monish says, do we have to tune the bike if you change the slip-ons? It totally depends. Um, if you're doing just the slip-ons, like if you go with just a set of the torquers and say do nothing else, if you don't do the air cleaner, if you don't do the header, then you can get by with no mapping. You can, you can just put on the mufflers and be done with it. Now that is on a touring model. If you do it on a soft tail model, depending on the model, the catalytic converter is in the mufflers from the factory. So if you pull the mufflers, you pull the cat. And if you pull the cat, you need to map the bike. Um, so if you're to install something like a twin slash three inch round or an eliminator 300 on like a low rider, low rider S, et cetera, then yeah, you'll need to map the bike. Um, it just depends. So basically if the, if the dynamics of the exhaust change that drastically by like removing a cat, 
you'll have to map it. If you do the air cleaner, you'll have to map it. If you go to free flowing headers, you'll have to map it. If you're doing just cat back only, so that would be something like a, like a fat bob or a sport glide or a touring model, then you can get away with just the mufflers and nothing else. It'll run better if you tune it. It would be more optimal if you would tune it, but you don't have to. Shmanish, got that covered. And I'm cut up on Instagram. So if you guys have any questions, again, go ahead and throw them out. That goes for everybody. So I guess uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, we'll go ahead and hang out for about another minute or so. And uh, other than that, we'll go ahead and call it. So I uh, got another one in from Instagram. Looks like uh, for Indian Scout 4-inch. We don't offer anything for the Indian Scout in a 4-inch. We do offer a 3-inch twin slash round. Uh, the high output grenade header was discontinued with the rest of the high output grenade line. But I believe we do still offer a 3-inch twin slash for that. Um, discontinued. We also discontinued the, um, the fuel pack LCD for that model. Uh, for the scouts. So if you need to get it mapped, I believe there's a few floating around still at distributors, but uh, yeah, should be good. Hi, beam Tommy. Good seeing you, Brian. Have a great day. Aloha. Thanks, buddy. Uh, good to uh, have you tune in again. Uh, thanks for all the good uh, support and the kind words. And I'm glad you liked the uh, swag bag we sent you. Solar Rider says, thanks for all the info you gave me to fix the running rich. Uh, thank you so much. Cool. Yeah, I'm glad we could help. Uh, again, if you guys need any help, go ahead and shoot me an email directly at fppro, uh, so fuelpackpro at vanceandhines.com. Vance and Hines is all spelled out. So V-A-N-C-E-A-N-D-H-I-N-E-S dot uh, com, just like our Instagram handle. And we can go ahead and I'll get you hooked up with whatever you guys need. So as far as the map is concerned, I can help you. You can contact our customer support team again, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 uh live chat email etc and we can go ahead and get the ball rolling so not seeing anything come through question wise so appreciate you uh appreciate your support and you tuning in and uh we'll catch you guys next week on fuel pack friday where we'll have a very special treat for you guys um i won't be on but we'll have uh john and tom i believe contacting and talking to you guys from daytona beach from bike week uh, again, if you guys are going to be at Bike Week, we will have both of our trucks there at Destination Daytona and at the Speedway. So if you need to get an air cleaner, exhaust, or an FP3 installed on your bike, go ahead, hit us up at Daytona Beach for Bike Week, and we'll get you hooked up. Uh, oh, hold on. A couple more coming through on Instagram. How can I identify what VNH air cleaner is on my bike if it was on it when I bought it? Um, it depends. Go ahead and take a picture of it. Shoot me an email, fppro.advancedandhines.com, and I'll let you know which one. Uh, it's either going to be, depending on the age of the bike, it could be a Duke, um, it could be a Naked, it could be an Upsweep, it could be a Grenade. Um, there's a lot of options. It could be a Rogue, Cage Fighter, X-Blade, etc. So, yeah. Uh, Solar says my, my S is running right. Normally I'd read it, but company so i'm pretty sure they shouldn't uh don't want me sailing profanity randomly uh so that's it thanks guys for joining me on another fuel pack friday and next week we'll be coming from daytona eddie good job back at you buddy uh we'll talk to y'all next week thanks